TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. The International Criminal Court in The Hague claims jurisdiction over the West Bank, Gaza and East Jerusalem, granting its chief prosecutor legal authority to conduct an investigation into alleged war crimes committed by Israel. Israeli Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu condemns the International Criminal Court accusing it of pure anti-Semitism. The Islamist Hamas organization welcomes the ICC's anticipated investigation into alleged Israeli war crimes, while in tandem asserting that its indiscriminate rocket fire toward Israel to be consistent with international humanitarian law. The International Criminal Court in The Hague, or ICC, ruled in a vote of 15 to 1 that it has, quote, territorial jurisdiction in the situation in Palestine, namely in Gaza, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem, as it put it, effectively granting its chief prosecutor, Fatou Ben Souda, legal authority for the purpose of conducting an investigation into alleged war crimes which the Palestinian Authority insists were committed by the State of Israel in the aforementioned territories. It is important to highlight that the court's chief prosecutor had already predetermined on December 20, 2019, that she reserves the legal right under the Rome Statute to open an investigation into Israeli war crimes. Following a thorough, independent and objective assessment of all reliable information available to my office, the preliminary examination into the situation in Palestine has concluded with the determination that all the statutory criteria under the Rome Statute for the opening of an investigation have been met. I am satisfied that there is a reasonable basis to proceed with an investigation into the situation in Palestine, pursuant to Article 53.1 of the Statute. In brief, I am satisfied, one, that war crimes have been or are being committed in the West Bank, including East Jerusalem and the Gaza Strip. Two, that potential cases arising from the situation would be admissible. And three, that there are no substantial reasons to believe that an investigation would not serve the interest of justice. Per Article 12 to A of the Rome Statute, the ICC may exercise its jurisdiction over alleged crimes only if the state on the territory of which the conduct in question occurred is a party to the treaty or has accepted the court's jurisdiction by a declaration. Therefore, the fact that Israel is not a signatory to the Rome Statute, in contrast to the Palestinian Authority, which is not a state under international law, yet became a party to the treaty on January 7, 2015, Jerusalem officials vehemently rejected the court's jurisdiction. Consequently, given the unique and highly contested legal and factual issues attached to the territory within which the investigation may be conducted, the ICC's prosecutor, Ben Souda, opted a court ruling necessary to resolve issues of jurisdiction. Subsequently, on February 5th, the panel of 16 judges, following extensive deliberations, decided by a majority of 15 to 1 that the court's territorial jurisdiction and the situation in Palestine, which it referred to as a state party to the ICC Rome Statute, extends to the territories occupied by Israel since 1967, namely Gaza, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. In its statement, the court explained that while the ICC is not constitutionally competent to determine matters of statehood that would bind the international community, the reference to the state on the territory of which the conduct in question occurred in the statute's Article 12.2a must be interpreted as a reference to a state party to the Rome Statute. Therefore, the court found that regardless of its status under general international law, Palestine's accession to the statute followed the correct and ordinary procedure and that the chamber has no authority to challenge and review the outcome of the accession procedure conducted by the assembly of states' parties. The court went on to conclude, quote, 
Palestine has thus agreed to subject itself to the terms of the ICC Rome Statute and has the right to be treated as any other state party for the matters related to the implementation of the statute. The court further noted that UN Resolution 67-19, among similarly worded resolutions, repeatedly reaffirmed the right of the Palestinian people to serve determination and to independence in their state of Palestine on the Palestinian territory occupied since 1967. Therefore, the majority of judges determined that the court's territorial jurisdiction in the situation in Palestine extends to the territories occupied by Israel since 1967, namely Gaza, the West Bank, including East Jerusalem. In response, Israeli officials condemned the court's ruling as political, emphasizing the fact that there is no, nor has there ever been, a state of Palestine. It's a shame that an international institution that we had so much hope for has capitulated to political pressure. There's no legal basis whatsoever in today's decision, and it damages the faith in the international legal system. Today's decision won't change the reality and won't change history. There isn't a Palestinian state, and there never has existed a Palestinian state. It is important to explain Israel's accusations of international criminal courts ruling out of political considerations. It is derived from the fact that the Palestinian Authority's accession to the Rome Statute as a member state was accepted by the Assembly of States Parties, which is a largely political body that serves as the court's management oversight and legislative body and is composed of representatives of the states which have ratified or acceded to the Rome Statute, which does not include Israel nor the United States. Separately, claiming jurisdiction over disputed territories derived from UN resolutions that have classified the West Bank, among others, as occupied Palestinian land, raises into question the court's objectivity. Naturally, however, the Palestinian Authority has welcomed the court's ruling. Uh, Israel uh, has been always uh, been treated above the law. Uh, there is no accountability uh, when it comes to, to Israel. Now, uh, uh, no one, uh, including the United States of America, could really provide protection to Israel. You know that always when we go to the Security Council, uh, the United States of America is the one who really shields uh, Israel from any criticism and prevents us from getting uh, whatever uh, uh, sanctions uh, needed uh, against Israel. Uh, today, the uh, United States of America cannot do anything you know, to protect Israel, and as a result, Israel has to be treated as a uh, uh, war criminal. Now that the ICC has determined its jurisdiction, Chief Prosecutor Fatou Ben Souda is expected to launch an investigation into alleged Israeli war crimes. The referred to crimes, according to the allegations submitted by the Palestinian leadership, seek to label Israeli construction of Jewish settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem as a war crime based on UN Security Council Resolution 2334, which was adopted on December 23, 2016, when the Obama administration decided to abstain from the vote. Per the resolution, quote, the establishment by Israel of settlements in the Palestinian territory, occupied since 1967, including East Jerusalem, has no legal validity and constitutes a flagrant violation under international law. When the ICC investigates Israel for fake war crimes, this is pure anti-Semitism. The court established to prevent atrocities like the Nazi Holocaust against the Jewish people is now targeting the one state of the Jewish people. First, it outrageously claims that when Jews live in our homeland, this is a war crime. Second, it claims that when democratic Israel defends itself against terrorists who murder our children, rocket our cities, we're committing another war crime. Yet the ICC refuses to investigate brutal dictatorships like Iran and Syria, who commit horrific atrocities almost daily. As Prime Minister of Israel, I assure you, we will fight this perversion of justice with all our might. The second part of the ICC's intended investigation pertains to alleged war crimes committed by Israel, as referred to by Premier Netanyahu, when the Jewish state sought to defend itself against Islamist organizations and the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip, 
from which thousands of rockets have been fired indiscriminately toward Israel's civilian populated territories. And while Jerusalem demands its natural right to defend itself against terrorism, the Islamist Hamas emphasizes that it regards indiscriminate rocket fire toward Israel to be consistent with international humanitarian law. Hamas <laughs> الاتفاقات وكل المؤسسات الدولية تشرع هذا الحق بالتالي هذه المقاومة المشروعة لا يمكن إدانتها ولا بأي حال من الأحوال. It is crucial to mention that in light of Jerusalem's expected refusal to cooperate with the investigation, the International Criminal Court, pursuant to Part 9 of the Rome Statute, can demand legal action by the so-called Assembly of States Parties to exercise legal action with the aim of persuading Israel to cooperate. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to lift up Spain in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem, the salvation of Israel, for all those who are impacted by the corona contagion and its numerous ramifications worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Shavuot Tovu Mevorach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.